Mornings on BBC Radio Scotland. Well, back in 2014, Scottish filmmaker Philip Todd teamed up with his brothers Nathan and Matthew and cousins John and Tom Walkinshaw to start making films together. Uh, and they formed Fellowship Film. It was officially formed. And here is a little snippet of their second film, which is called Jesse and the Elf Boy. I'm beginning to think I may never find her. No! It's you. He's, he's invisible. Where did you learn to style like that? Sounds like a great Christmas film. Here to tell us how this became a family affair and what it's been like filming under COVID restrictions, not easy, is uh, Philip Matthew and Nathan Todd. Morning, boys. Morning. 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 Thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Philip, we'll start with you because this is your this is your full time job, isn't it? Uh, it pretty much is. Yeah, I, I work freelance as a film editor and then I do the, the directing as well. And, and, and where did the idea come from to sort of form a production company with, you know, your, with two brothers and two cousins? It's a real family affair. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Uh, well, we, we've always worked together on creative projects as we've grown up. Um, I, I come from a big family. I have six siblings, and so we did lots of things together. And, um, yeah, what we decided at a certain point that we wanted to make a film uh, and that, that actually became our first film, which was called The Gaelic King. And after that, and after getting a pretty good uh, distribution for that, we decided maybe we should take this a bit more seriously. And uh, so we formed the production company and started developing a slate of other projects. I mean, making a film sounds like such a massive undertaking to do, unless you're sort of under the umbrella of a, of a huge studio. I mean, uh, do you need lots of money to do it? If anybody was listening and feeling inspired, do you need huge budgets? And how do you get in touch with actors? and how do you get it distributed? It just seems like an overwhelming prospect. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, there is a lot to it. And I, and I think certainly in our first project, we were very much learning as we went. Um, and, and I think having done it once, we now feel a lot more confident um, going into it. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, it's like any big project. It's, you know, how do you eat an elephant one, one bite at a time? And uh, so if you can break it down and just sort of do one step, uh, at a time, then it, it becomes a bit more manageable. How are you managing to fund uh, the films? Then is it sort of have you got investors? Are you beg borrowing and from from family, or, or how are you going about doing that? Paying for it all? Yeah, so we have uh, um, a, a collection of sort of individual private investors. So it's it's kind of a crowdfunding model where lots of people put in a little bit, and then it, it kind of adds up to a, a bigger sum. Um, rather than looking to go for, to one financier who can put in a big chunk of money. Right, and so and so, are you still crowdfunding now, or is that that's how you that's you don't need any more because you got the film made? Yes, we are actually. So we're into a kind of new phase now that we've shot the film. We're into post production, and we're we're currently running a crowdfunding campaign to raise a bit more funds to help us finish post production. Uh, so we have a campaign live on Indiegogo at the moment. It's actually eighty percent funded at the moment, which is really exciting. That's fantastic. And, and tell us about Jesse and the Elf. What kind of, what genre is it in? Um, where did you sort of find the actors? Where can we see it? Yeah, uh, it's, it's a family comedy. Um, it's, it's not actually technically a Christmas movie, even though it has an elf in it. He's not technically a Christmas elf. He's, it's actually based on the legend of Gilly Doo, which is a Scottish myth about uh, a fairy who lives in the forest. Um, and, and essentially we took that legend and we, we built on that to create the story of what if, you know, later on in life, um, this girl who meets Gilly Doo in the forest when, when, he's, when she's young, what if she grows up, she's got a job and a hair salon in the city, and then this elf suddenly turns up and kind of turns her life upside down. Uh, so there's lots of kind of fun and games. There's quite a lot of uh, kind of slapstick comedy in it. Um, and it's hopefully something that, you know, the whole family could sit down and enjoy together. And, and Matthew, is it, are we, can we see it anywhere at the moment or do you have to find a distributor before it, we can all go and watch it? Uh, we've had some initial talks with distributors, which is very exciting. Um, and so we're quite confident that we will be able to sell it. Uh, we are aiming for a cinematic release. What's more likely is that it'll be home release, so then people would be able to get it on DVD. They'd be able to probably watch it online streaming, yeah. Amazon, Netflix, etc. But that's very much down to the individual distributors, and it's quite a long road finding that. Uh, and um, and I and I hear a rumor that the reason that you you've grown up to be such a creative family is that you weren't allowed to watch the telly when you were younger. <laughs> is that yeah. true? 
Um, well, we did. Yeah, we didn't have um, we didn't have television. We had videos, which we loved very much. Um, but uh, yeah, we didn't have television, which was an interesting experience growing up in the nineties and eighties. But clearly, it made you come up with your own entertainment, and and sort of this is the end result. It's not bad, is it? Well, yeah, on a serious note, I think it did, really. I think we were a big family. Um, you know, we, we did rely on each other for entertainment. And I, I do think it did something really significant to our imaginations. Um, so, yeah, by all means, if psychologists want to psychoanalyze that and come to some conclusions, we'd be very open <laughs> to that. And, and how does the family dynamic work? I mean, there's, the, there is, you know, there's no spat like a sibling spat. So if, if, the, if the three of you don't agree on something... Um, can it get a bit? Uh, can the temperature get a bit hot? Uh, yeah, yeah, it can do. Um, I, I, we, I think we work well together because we just always work well together, and we kind of have established what our different roles are and what our different kind of areas of expertise are. Um, this shoot was obviously a bit different because we, we virtually never saw each other um, and it was so rushed and it was so frantic because of all the COVID regulations that, um, you know, we were really just desperate to actually be able to have some contact and to, to speak to each other, but there was hardly any time to do so. So there wasn't much time for falling out, to be honest. Absolutely. And, and, and Nathan, tell us about the filming process. I mean, we've sort of heard stories from you know, sort of the, the, the stalwarts of, of soap operas, of the difficulties of filming scenes during this, this uh, bizarre period that we've lived through in the last nine months, trying to film, you know, kissing scenes with perspex between the actors and things, hmm. and, uh, and obviously having to test the, the crew and the cast repeatedly. Yeah. Um, wh what sort of things, what sort of hurdles did you have to overcome in order to get it done? Well, I think one of the main things is just having a very limited number of people makes it very challenging. Um, so we had a, a very uh, skeleton crew, um, which as we're quite a low budget film, we had that anyway, but even more so with COVID and we weren't able to just bring in more people if we needed more help. We had to actually come up with creative solutions to to do things. Um, and so I think that was both a struggle, but also it really I think, brought people together as a, a team as well and just had to creatively solve problems. And, and how do you go about and go up against, you know, you're, when you're talking about, um, I guess, I mean, it's, it's not really cinema movies at the moment, is it? I mean, it's lots of people are just launching their films now on, on the various platforms, streaming platforms. But how do you compete? How do you get onto a platform and market uh, an indie film that's you know made in, in Scotland by Scottish filmmakers? How do you get it out into the world? Because generally speaking, back in the days when I was uh, working in that industry, the marketing budget is the biggest budget of all, much, much bigger than actually the cost of making the film. So how do you guys manage to, to do that? It's a very good question. And I think um, it's interesting from my perspective too, is my main work is in marketing actually. All oh, right. Um, but um, what, with The Gallic King, our previous feature film, uh, we were very fortunate to um, meet a great sales agent. Um, and she took the film to some markets and, and we actually got distributors through that. Um, and so that actually then um, propelled us into much bigger audiences. Um, and we're also, but also the, the crowdfunder that we've got running just now, has, I think, proven to be a, a really great way of sharing the film as well it's like not just about getting the money that we need to finish the film it's actually also we've been able to build a bit of an audience and we hope to do that more as well and are you going to are you going to be able to have any kind of premiere do you think down the line for the film certainly we're, we're hoping to in fact that's one of the perks <laughs> um we we had a big cast and crew screening in the the cine world in glasgow for the gallic king with 500 people there Right. Um, and they were, they were quite pleased because it was the biggest screening that night. Um, so that was good. So we're hoping to do something similar with this film if regulations allow, you know, sometime next year. And, and, and a very cheeky question. Are you able to make a living from doing this? Nathan, I'll come back to you. Yeah. Um, so, not well, not for all of us, no. Uh, we, we have had some of us paid in the past and we are paying people for this project on a project basis. But uh, for myself and for Matthew, we are we work in other industries. So, so you're you're getting paid in thanks and love from your brother. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> uh, but Philip, Philip, then, Philip, this is obviously a it's a career that you want to follow. What what's next after the after the re the release of of this one? What's next for you? Well, I'm really committed to to growing Fellowship Film as a production company and. 
and we have a slate of projects in development and and so essentially the the next thing for me would be to to get the next project off off the ground once this one is completed um and yeah just try and keep making feature films in scotland and, and is it if hollywood calls will you be off <laughs> I, I, I would have to think long and hard, but uh, I think probably not. I really, I really love Scotland, and uh, and part of what we do actually is we want our films to be distinctively Scottish. We use Scottish mythology and history to inspire the stories that we make, and we also, you know, love filming in the in the countryside, obviously, and all the beautiful scenery. So, so there is something about Scotland which I think I, I, I yeah is really key to what we're doing. So I don't know. I would have to really think about that if there was well, you if there could- was an opportunity. You, if they want you, they can come here, right? Let's, let's, <laughs> let, let's pitch it to them that way. Listen, it's been an absolute, well, absolute pleasure to talk to you. Where can people, if they do want to support uh, the crowdfunding uh, of, of this or the next project, have you got a website? or? Yeah, definitely. We, uh, fellowshipfilm.com is the website, and you, there's a link on the homepage to our crowdfunding campaign, which is on Indiegogo. Well, we very much look forward to, uh, to seeing Jesse and the Elf Boy and many more films from Fellowship Film. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. That's uh, Philip, Matthew and Nathan Todd. What happened when Ayr's women folk found themselves sharing a borough when the garrison came to 